Yeah, um, while we are waiting for the others, uh, let me say hello to all of you. So welcome, Raizas, Kalos, Teiri, Mechu, and Diwa. <clears throat> so we still have like two minutes before we can start the class. And yeah, if you want to ask something or talk with each other, uh, please go ahead. And also welcome, William or Eric. And yes. also, hello, Julian. <clears throat> and yeah, welcome, Jovian. Welcome to the classroom. Okay, we still have one minute. Uh, if you have information context of your classmates, let's remind them to um, come to the class. Virtually, of course. Yeah, yeah. Moza, David, Halaman, welcome. Hmm. Um, yeah, um, Nafis, welcome, and Muhammad Gazian, also welcome to the class. Uh, wait, I have to make some modification first. Um, yeah, save. Okay, it's already 10 a.m. So yeah, I think we can just start class. We can, I, I, I think we can just start the class now. So yeah, uh, for those who have in contact information of the others, uh, please remind them to come to the class. Although yeah, there's a recording and attendance won't be counted this week, but yeah, still please just come to the class because usually um, in the first week, um, there are some yeah, information about the course administration and if you have some questions it's better to ask it during the class uh, without further ado so uh, welcome to the platform-based development or platform-based programming class so yeah i need to remind you this is platform-based development class so if you are not enrolled in this class well obviously you join the wrong classroom but if you want to just sit in and since the online lecture session the lecture session is always online feel free to sit in maybe you will learn something new in this class and also this course has a discord server so uh, you can check the invitation link at the course scale page the learning management system that we use in faculty of computer science universitas indonesia and also, please get to know with your classmates. Uh, that's why we have the Discord server. So at least you can uh, chat with each other in the provided Discord server. And yeah, to give you uh, information about the demographics of our participants in the semester, uh, we have uh, various students coming from yeah many places. There's one coming from Sumatra, if I look in their Scalis profile, and also from Eastern Java. And also, we also have an exchange student from Malaysia. So, and according to the academic registration, there is, a, there is also two other um, participants from, uh, I, have, I, I still have no idea where they come from, but yeah. Please expect other other two exchange students will be participating in this course. And yeah, to set expectation about this course, uh, first of all, this course is about web application development. So at the end of this course, you will learn how to create a web application. So you will 
do some back end programming meaning uh developing an app that will run on server and that will serve data that will be displayed by the front end in the back end programming you will use python programming language and a web application frame development framework called django and then as for the front end programming which is developing the display for your app uh, we will use html uh, plain old javascript and also css cascading style sheets in addition beside developing web application you will also develop mobile application using a cross-platform uh, development framework called Flutter SDK that is developed using Dart programming language. So yeah, you will learn many languages in this course. So yeah, test yourself. And then um, you will also perform an, a simple integration between your web application with your um, mobile application. So once you already have the uh, web application, uh, you can make that web application to serve some data that will be displayed in the mobile application. And lastly, uh, you will also learn to work collaboratively in developing web application and mobile application at the same time. So uh, in this course, there will be two group projects. Uh, before the midterm exam and also before the final exam. The project before midterm exam is about developing the web application using Django. And the project before the final exam is about developing a mobile application. Now, um, this course also will not discuss about modern web front and development framework. So maybe when you googling, do some googling about web development, you will encounter a framework like React, Vue, or other uh, JavaScript front end framework. Uh, we won't discuss that in this course. So this course will only uh, introduce you with basic web development without using Node.js runtime. So the framework that I just mentioned, uh, which is React and Vue and other modern in quotes JavaScript development framework are mainly using Node.js to build and also to run the front end. We won't use that in this course. And then this course will not uh, make your application production ready. Uh, does anyone know what production means here in the context of uh, software development? Any one, any two, any three? No one? So production means um, running your application to be used for general users. So from your introductory programming courses up until now, uh, the applications that you develop are only run for your own consumption and also your teaching assistants and also your lecturers. So basically, it is application that is not used by other people. It is only used for the grading purposes to obtain a grade for your course. However, production ready means that your application is actually deployed on an actual infrastructure that will be served in order for the users to use that application so you will deploy your application you will run your application on a server and make that application can be used by other people not by just not only by yourself while we will deploy your uh, the application to a cloud service provider later on but some aspects that makes your application production actual production ready won't be discuss it in detail in this course. And you will learn more about that in a more advanced programming courses like in advanced programming for those who are enrolled in a computer science program and also in elective course called web application and services. 
And we also won't discuss about native platform programming. What I mean by native is we are using the um, development, start the development framework directly to the certain platform, like developing a native Android or iOS mobile application. Well, we won't we won't discuss about that. And also we won't develop any yeah, um, embedded systems things like uh, programming to Arduino or any microcontroller. And yeah, since this is going for a while, the hype about Web3 technology, uh, we won't discuss that. And yeah, we do not discuss blockchain in this course. And later, uh, there's also game development where we can develop game to mobile platform, like to your Android phone or your Apple phone. Um, we will discuss that in this course and the related course also not offered in the semester. So yeah, uh, welcome to uh, platform-based development. This course is for credits. So to give you an estimate to plan your study, uh, four credits means that we will have four times 50 minutes of scheduled class and lab session. So two hours today, plus two hours in Thursday for the lab session. In addition, uh, you will have four times 50 minutes of practical exercises. So there will be assignments, writing essay, and also um, do some programming exercises. And then lastly, uh, you will also have four times 15 minutes of self-learning period. So uh, please use that time to read documentation, experiment with your code or discuss with your classmates. And yeah, pretty much you can do anything. And um, please manage your time wisely. Uh, I recognize and I... Um, what uh, what's the English word for that? Uh, but uh, in as in short, uh, I do know that uh, you have you have prior priority in your study and your private life. So yeah, please manage the priorities accordingly. And yeah, uh, let me introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Daya Adianto. Uh, you can call me Daya or Pak Daya. Uh, you can contact me via email at the displayed address to my CSUE email address. And if you want to have some discussion with me, uh, you can um, contact me via my office hours by creating an appointment. Uh, you can pretty much discuss about anything actually, uh, not only about the discourse, but also if you uh, want to have some discussion about your study plan, and since you also, most of you are enrolled in the international class program, uh, well, actually I was uh, graduated from the international class program as well. So if you want to discuss about the study life or how uh, the lectures are were conducted at the partner university, like in the University of Queensland, you can also contact me. Uh, or to have some discussion with me. And what's my capability in this course? Well, uh, I developed a game with a team before that is a part of joint research project with Faculty of Humanities. So it's an Android game. Uh, it was developed using a game engine and you can check it out on Play Store and the source code is also open in uh, on GitLab. But yeah, uh, it's in Bahasa Indonesia or in Indonesian. So yeah, if you understand Indonesian, maybe you can uh, play it. And also I developed a mobile application before for the Faculty of Engineering. It's an app that I developed with a team that provide a conference timetable. So instead of checking the website, the participants of the conference can just uh, look for their schedule and also um, look for topics of that will be presented by the speakers in the conference via the app. 
and yeah, uh, it's available on Play Store, but it's for the old conference that was held in 2000, uh, 2019. So yeah, the data is already outdated, but it's still working if I remember correctly. And the source, the source code is also open, uh, but um, and it using uh, it used a cross-platform application development framework called React Native. It's similar to Flutter that you will learn in this in this course. But yeah, instead of using that programming language, it is using um, JavaScript. And we also have some teaching assistants. So we have three teaching assistants in this course. Dinda, Winaldo, and also uh, Zuhal. Uh, let me check the list of participants. Um, do they uh, join the room? Uh, not yet. Okay, so they are not uh, in this room, but you will see them later in the lab session and also in the Discord server if you already joined in the Discord server. And also, thank you, Fico. Uh, very cool. Yeah, but yeah, it's already, uh, it was developed few years ago so i kind of already forgot how to develop it so yeah by teaching this course maybe i will uh, learn again how to develop a mobile application and the responsibilities of the teaching assistants are as follows so they will be the one that develop the tutorials and assignments including translating existing materials to english so to give you some background information, uh, this class is jointly held with the uh, the regular program, the, the one that teaching the materials in native Indonesian. So the materials usually will be developed in Indonesian first. Therefore, the assist the teaching assistant will translate those materials to English so that the materials can be used in the international class program. And yeah, the TS will be the one that facilitates the tutorial session every Thursday uh, at uni. So please come to the university in the, in the designated room. And then they are the ones that will be grading your uh, participation in the tutorial session and also grading your work and also the one that they, also, they will also grant your assignments. And if you have some questions regarding the courses, uh, you can also ask the PAs. So I think uh, that's all regarding the course information and, uh, and also about myself. Any questions before we proceed to the actual lecture materials? Uh, maybe I want to uh, get to know about yourself. So, yeah. Um, mm, no questions from me, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Um, yeah. Um, I think I need to explain about the policy for in uh, during the online class session. Uh, first of all, um, it's okay to turn off your camera, but when you talk or raise question, please turn on your camera. Um, some other classes might require you to turn on all of your camera, but I realized that uh, some students might be using limited data plan in their home connection or maybe using mobile connection, which uh, may be very limited because in Indonesia, for those who do not know, uh, many of us are using mobile connection and the data plan is limited. So we have like to buy a prepaid data plan uh, and we have to like a bit conservative to ensure that the data plan will actually um, enough for us for the whole month. So in order to reduce the data usage, it's okay to turn off your camera um, because yeah, if the video data feed 
is mainly black, uh, I mean, without any faces. Uh, obviously, the number of pixels that will be transmitted will be uh, smaller because there are much more pixels that are having uniform color and they will be compressed more effectively from the Zoom server, for example, or when it is streamed to YouTube. So it's okay to turn off your camera, but when you raise question or uh, talk to me in the Zoom room, please turn on your camera. That's my policy on the uh, on the online class session. And yeah, for obvious reasons, uh, do not uh, turn on your microphone because maybe the background noises from your faces will interrupt uh, with the class session okay um yeah so right now we have 23 participants so let me say welcome to those who just participated into the zoom room and yeah first of all i want to ask some questions uh how many of you have experience in web development you can uh, respond via chat or by responding using emo emojis in Zoom. How many of you have experience in web development? Okay, Fico have one experience on the Fico. <laughs> okay, uh, can you tell us more about it, Fico? Hello, um, hello, class and hello, sir. I won't say it. I won't say it as much as an experience. Only like um. A few tinkering. Mm -hmm. um, I've played around with. Uh, so I've only played around with uh, the front end side of things. So, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and um, like playing around with like tail Tailwind CSS. And uh, because I'm interested in XR, I've also experimented uh, experimented with uh, TJS and WebXR, but uh, not much experience. But only tinkering in those side of things. So. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh interesting. You just mentioned about Tailwind CSS. Yeah, we will learn one example of CSS framework, but yeah, we won't learn about Tailwind CSS, but rather we will learn about Bootstrap CSS later on. Okay, cool. Thank you, Vico. And how many of you uh well um have experience in developing mobile application? No one? Yeah, it's okay. Since usually the motivation for you all to take this course is yeah, to gain some experiences, right? So yeah, it's okay if you haven't any, had any experiences in uh, developing web application or mobile application because we you, you will learn about that in this course, okay? And lastly, um, do you have some kind of expectation that what you on what you will learn in this course? Maybe uh, you want to develop the next cool app. Uh, somebody, does anyone would like to uh, explain or describe their vision or their, um, what is called, um, their plan, what on the kind of app that you will build later after you finish this course? Nobody. Okay. Oh, Fico, maybe you want to uh, tell us about your plan. What kind of app that you want to develop after finishing this course? Uh, I don't know, sir. Uh, it's it's only a personal problem of mine. But mm -hmm. um, uh, yesterday when I was trying to find a parking slot in the University of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, I kept being moved around by the uh, security, especially uh, in the um, sorry, a building, uh, the new building, uh, since there's, uh, that's only a lecturer's uh, practice lot. Um, so maybe I'm, maybe <laughs> I don't know, maybe like um, creates an, an application uh, specifically for like parking slots in <laughs> University of Indonesia and specifically for whom and 
those sort of stuff, but I don't know. It's just uh, something that uh, I've a problem that I'm experiencing basically. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, we already spent a bit of too much time in <laughs> in uh, chatting about the course, and for those who haven't. Uh, enroll into the learning management system. Uh, please uh, enroll to the course page in the learning management system. In in our faculty, in Faculty of Computer Science Universitas Indonesia, we use a learning management system called Scaling Student Centered E Learning Environment, and. Uh, you can access the, the page in this URL. So if you haven't enrolled into the learning management system, please enroll now because uh, the any information such as uh, the announcement for the new assignment and announcement regarding what it, uh, whether the class will be delivered online or offline will be uh, publish on Scaly. So it is really important for you all to be enrolled in the Scaly page. You can see uh, there are already some information such as the course profile document. So this is the uh, formal document that describes about this course. So what I just presented to you all before is was just uh, summary of the course information. The details yeah, are in the document. So please check the course profile document. And also, um, if you, the type that is shy <laughs> to talk in the Zoom room, uh, you can also uh, fill in the survey that I published on Scaly. So yeah, not only for those who are shy in Zoom room, but also for the others, uh, this uh, fill in the survey because I want to get to know all of you. And if you do have preferences about the style of the deliver uh, the material delivery, uh, or if you have a particular uh, issue with your with your learning method, or if you have any other needs, uh, please just. Uh, tell me so that I can try to accommodate with your um, with your needs so all of you can enjoy participating in this course and yeah uh, for those uh, yeah about recording I usually also stream uh, my class sessions to YouTube channel to my YouTube channel uh, so the recording will be available on YouTube because yeah, uh, it's also possible to put the recording on Zoom. But yeah, um, I remember if put recording to Zoom, uh, you need to log in or yeah, it's a bit difficult uh, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's more simpler just to put the recordings on YouTube. Yep. Uh, any other questions before uh, we continue to the actual uh, lecture materials? Yes, no. So if there are no questions, uh, let's begin with the actual lecture material. So yeah, it's just the first day of the class. So we uh, immediately learn about the course materials. Yeah, so let's begin. Since uh, the course is named Platform Based Development or Programming, uh, the main question is what do we mean by platform? So, yeah, let me ask you uh, a question What is platform? What do you know about platform in any context? <laughs> Uh, Amar, maybe you want to speak something. Oh, okay. Uh, Lim or Eric? Yeah. Uh, for me, the meaning of platform is a 
place to show some things to us. It's like there's a state or there's some uh, some state to show the things to, to let people know. Okay, thank you, Lim. Uh, or what should I call you, Eric or Lim? Uh, Eric will do. Oh, okay, thank you, Eric. Yeah. Good any buddy. any other opinions regarding platform? Okay. So most most of you are are a bit shy, <laughs> aren't you? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, you can also respond via chat. So. Uh, if you more comfortable in typing, yeah, you can also use the chat uh, feature in Zoom. Well, my personally, if I heard about the the word platform, I imagined the platform that usually you can find on stage when you look at live concert. So <laughs> if you had, uh, if you ever went to a music concert before yeah the, usually the performers are standing on the platform so the platform is the the thing that will uh, give a foundation for things that uh, will be put on top of that platform uh okay yeah uh i see some responses in the chat so Raphael min, uh, mentioned about an elevated place. Yeah, that's right. It's similar to the what example that I just explained. And also via private chat uh, from the direct message in Zoom, somebody uh, mentioned about the environment to do something. Mm, right. Usually, yeah. Uh, you can view... Um, a building or a place as a platform. So when you want to, for example, uh, do something like uh, learn or participating in the class, then you can go to the faculty's building to uh, sit in a class. So it's like the environment for you to do something. Okay, and also Diwa and Shafiko, they mentioned about medium or foundation. Yeah, uh, those are uh, the answers. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, there are also some definitions from uh, people out there. Um, so regardless of the definition, um, in the context of this course, platform will be a um, group of technologies that are used as a base that will be used by other application processors or technologies. So um, let me give you an illustration. Uh, let me grab my... I haven't been using this for a while, like one semester. Okay. Uh, how do I turn on the the whiteboard thing in Zoom? Or maybe I can just directly annotate the yeah the screen. Okay. Uh, Yes, okay, it works. So um, let's say uh, we have a program. Uh, you have a calculator. So not that fun. Um, yep. Let's say you have a calculator. And when you have calculator, and um, let's say you uh, develop it in a programming language like in Python, 
So in Python, maybe you will define some functions, right? So you define a function called add that will uh, increment two integers and the results will be returned as an integer value. Similarly, you will also have other function like multiply and that function uh, will perform multiplication of the two arguments. And also the other uh, functionality of the calculators. Those can be defined in a source code written in a programming language. So you have your program, uh, a calculator or uh, an academic information system or an app that keep track uh, your sleep, for example. You start uh, when you're developing an application, you start with the uh, developing functions, classes, methods that will realize the functionality of your app. But then um, your functions uh, will process input and produce output in the in a localized environment. I mean, um, when you read the program, let's say uh, using the simple example uh, that I've written in the notepad, your functions to perform uh, multiplication and to add two numbers um, will have their data stored in their own scope, uh, meaning uh, they will live in the memory of your computer in your RAM, uh, the random access memory. And for and if you only have functions, actually it is useless, right? I mean, uh, you have some function, but then uh, it cannot be used by other people. Like uh, if you want to have your users to use the calculator, then you will need to provide them with some kind of user interface, right? Not just the function declarations in Python source code. You will need to provide them with user interface. So after you have developed some functions, your calculator, um, we'll have another, uh, what I call as a layer. So on top of the calculator, there will be a user interface, UI. So your calculator are written in Python functions, for example, and then uh, you can write another code you can also use Python or maybe use uh, another programming language that will find that will realize the user interface functionality that interact with your calculator program. So your user interface could be a console-based user interface or graphical or maybe even a web. So you can develop user interface using console. So you use the print statements in Python and also you use the input function to get uh, input from user into your calculator application. If you develop the calculator application to run on console or terminal, Similarly, if you develop your calculator application to have a graphical user interface, then you will use, uh, what is it called in Python? TKinter library, where you can uh, develop some user interface widgets that will display and also accept input 
from user from the user so the user can put their number into the text field and then they can click a button and the interaction from the user interface will be uh what is called um passed down into the calculator application and the, when the calculator application receive the input from the user interface the calculator application will perform a computation and then the result is returned back to the user interface and similarly if you develop it for the web you can provide a graphical user interface as well in form of html documents which you will learn in this course but uh, there's also another medium in web called web service. Uh, apologies for my bad handwriting. <laughs> so web service is, you can view it like a user interface, but instead consumed or used by human, uh, web service will be used by another program. So you can have um, another uh, program or application like a mobile app that will uh, communicate with the web service of your calculator. So from the mobile app, uh, the mobile app can trigger a remote call, a remote procedure call to your calculator by sending a data package to the web service. And when the web service recognize the data package sent from the mobile application, the web service will communicate to the calculator application and trigger the requested function. And then once the calculator application done the computation, the result will be a process in the web service and then sent back to the requester, which in this case is the mobile application. <clears throat> so yeah, we can have a program that runs on platform. So actually your program, uh, for example, the calculator is running on your PC, right? And your PC is maybe using a CPU that runs uh, x64 architecture. So from your PC that has uh, some components like the CPU, memory, graphic cards, etc. Uh, the your PC will run a soft, another software actually called operating system, and from the operating system, it will run your application, the calculator, for example, and then your calculator can have another layer on top of it let's say the user interface and that user interface can uh deliver can provide the functionality to the user via several medium via the console medium the terminal or uh, desktop graphical user interface or from web pages or via the web services so if we view the program or application that we develop, um, the every application that we will we develop or we will develop later on, usually, uh, you can feel a bit like sitting on top of a platform. The calculator, for example, runs on top of the Python's platform, the Python's runtime, which in turn the Python's runtime run on top of your operating system, your Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, and then your operating systems is running on top of the hardware that runs your computer. So yeah, 
it's layers of layer of platform required to run your application and you can also build your application to become a platform for other components later on so yeah um in short uh platforms are the norm so you will see um even if we develop an application, we will require a platform in order to develop and also to run the application. And later on, you can also your, use your application to become the platform for other application or other components of your application. Uh, up to this point, any questions before we continue to the next slide? or maybe other opinions. Not yet. Yeah, uh, the one that I just explained uh, mostly focused on the software, the application when it is running on our PC. Uh, but if we break down further, uh, let's say, uh, when you have your application communicating with other application via uh, a network, for example, um, you will le uh, learn more about this in a uh, computer network course. But to give you a quick summary, um, in order to transmit data between computers, actually it involves several layers from software to hardware and the involving the data transmission medium in between two of the computers that wants to communicate with each other. And one of them is the transmission medium, like when you use mobile data, um, the data transmission physically can follow certain uh, standards like 3G, 4G, or even 5G. And that is the platform for trans data transmission, basically using wireless transmission. And how it is how the data is transmitted via the, the wireless transmission, uh, usually we don't have to care or know about that when we are developing our application. Yeah, at least we do know that maybe when we are developing a mobile application, we need to check whether the device is connected to the 3G network or 4G network. We can query or check about that when we are developing a mobile application. However, how the data transmission works in 3G, 4G, or 5G, usually we as the software developer, we don't have to care about that. Uh, we can just view it like a magic thing. So we just believe uh, it will be transmitted. Uh, the data will be transmitted via 3G, 4G, or 5G, but how it is being transmitted, uh, we usually don't need to know. Similarly, about the electrical transmission or engines in automotive, uh, they are platforms and yeah, how it works while it is interesting to know but sometimes uh, when we build an application on top of another platform uh, we trust the platform that we use to work as expected but again uh, since we are in academic environment and also later on when you uh, work professionally uh, it is great to know your application and also the layers below your application so that we can gain deeper understanding on how our application actually works. So it's, it's just not as simple as uh, the application sends a data package to another application, but we need to know how technically it, 
it is possible to sense a data from an application to another application because maybe you will encounter a bug for example or an error and in order to fix that you need to know a deeper level of understanding of your platform so yeah another question time um so you already seen some example of platform right like uh, in communication or wireless data transmission, there are 2G, 3G, or 4G. In electrical transmission, we have ACDC. Uh, what are other examples of technology platform that you ever heard before? Maybe you want to share one or two examples to the class? A platform for doing building something, for example. Yeah, it it could be have a name. Okay, Raphael answered Unreal Engine, Kalush Windows, Fico streaming platform, Twitch. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's address several answer first. And I think I will go with the one that come up first, which is Unreal Engine. Um, AWS, uh, Dila responded to that. Um, I think I can, well, let me prepare something. Um, something. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm preparing some kind of stuff in my separate monitor. Uh, okay, cool, it still works. Okay, let's pick one as example here. Uh, Unreal Engine. So, um, Raphael mentioned about Unreal Engine. Uh, for those who do not know, Unreal Engine is a game engine. Uh, it means that um, it provides the game developer with uh, software packages uh, and also um, a tool, uh, set of tools to be exact, that can be used by game developers to build a game. So in game development, usually uh, it involves many aspects, uh, graphics rendering, audio, artificial intelligence, and uh, game design, uh, programming, etc. And if every develop, if every game developer has to build everything from scratch, then uh, it will involve a, a lot amount of works. So instead of building everything from scratch, developers can reuse existing solution. And Unreal Engine, for example, already packaged existing solutions that can be reused by other game developers. So instead of having to write their own um, graphic rendering engine, a uh, game developer can use the one that already provided by Unreal Engine in order to uh, make their 3D model displayed in the game world. And they can also modify the model directly in the engine, in the uh, graphical editor provided along with the engine. Kalush mentioned Windows. Yes, Windows can also be regarded as platform. Uh, you run your applications on Windows because uh, Windows provided you with uh, certain functionalities that will let you run any application that has .exe as the extension. You will learn more about this in operating system course. And Fico mentioned about Twitch. Yeah, Twitch is a streaming platform. So does YouTube. And yeah, 
it provides existing functionalities, right? So instead of the streamers that you maybe follow on YouTube or Twitch, uh, the streamers can just use the platform to stream their videos instead of having to code their own Twitch-like or YouTube-like platform. And yeah, Dylan also mentioned AWS. Uh, the cloud service provider can build a, uh, prepackaged solutions that can be reused by developers. Like uh, instead of the developer have to set up their own server or set up their own infrastructure to run their application, they can ask AWS to uh, provide them with a server or an environment for running their application. So yeah, uh, the developer can save some costs, like uh, financial costs or even um, effort in setting up their application by using a cloud platform. <laughs> and yeah. There are many other definitions about platform, specifically in our domain in computing. So uh, one definition mentioned about the platform serve as the basic foundation for development and support of hardware and software. And also, yeah, operating system such as Windows or Linux can be considered also as a platform that lets you run computer programs. The details on how it works will be discussed in our system scores. And yeah, I see it also there's one definition that already, uh, what is it called? Uh, I'm sorry if I sometimes have to pause a bit because yeah, uh, English is not my native language. So sometimes I have to perform some queries to look for uh, the correct or appropriate English word for a concept that I, that I have to tell you all. And I also see uh, one definition that pretty much uh, semantic, uh, not semantically, but um, uh, the meaning is similar to the one that I just illustrated in, pre in several slides before uh, the second uh, definition to be exact. So yeah, uh, we have hardwares which will run our software. And there are some variations in hardware and software platforms. Yeah, uh, I can skip this definition. It's already been, uh, I already uh, explained about this before. Yeah. Another questions. Uh, the platform that uh, we just mentioned before mainly focus on uh, the hardware level and also the software level that will be used as the best the uh, not the, as the base base platform to run other applications on top of it now let's shift our focus on the application application will run on top of another platform such as the operating system right now, in order to build an application, uh, have you, do you have any examples of programming platform or framework that you can use or we can use to um, build the application? Can you mention one or two name of platform or framework that we can use in building an application? Shafiko mentioned about ReactJS, uh, Flutter by Dylan. Any other examples from the others, especially from the ones that haven't <laughs> uh, sent a message to Zoom or speak uh, on Zoom? Yeah, uh, good examples. React, Flutter, Angular, Xcode. Yeah, thank you, everyone. <clears throat> yeah, it's already all, it's also mentioned in the next slide, but yeah. Um, Carlos also mentioned about Django, right? So yeah, there are a lot of 
platform and also frameworks usually we refer platform as um, the set or a set of uh, what is called again um okay so platform usually refers to this the existing functionalities that can be reused in order to build and run an application in our context right uh, but frameworks uh, is a reusable software packages that already been designed in a certain way in order to let developer build an application on that framework. So usually framework already set certain rules or convention that should be followed by the developers in order to build an application using that framework, where in turn, uh, after the application development using a framework, the application can run on a certain platform, like on a web platform that runs a web server, an application server that uh, serve your Django application, for example. And let me uh, follow up some examples in the chat room. Um, yeah, see, for example, Flutter. Uh, you will learn later in Flutter. They provided what is called as SDK, Software Development Kit. Uh, you can view it like a framework. Uh, uh, not a framework. Yeah, Software Development Kit is more general than platform. So instead of having a certain rules or convention that must be followed by the user of the development kit, uh, Flutter provides software packages and also tools that can be used by the developers in any way they want. So Flutter provides you later with libraries, software packages that you can use to build a mobile application. But how you will structure your code later on, um, Flutter doesn't care about that. Flutter only provides you with software packages, like the libraries, uh, tools that you can run in order to build the Flutter application. They only provide that. How you structure the application, um, you can design it on your own or follow others' example. Maybe there are people who develop a framework that guide you to design and build your application in a certain manner in Flutter. So yeah, Flutter is more like an SDK that provides a lot of libraries and tools that lets you to build a web uh, a mobile application but how you structure your code later on uh, flutter doesn't provide an ex a convention or set of rules that you need to follow usually uh, uh, one rule of thumb that i like to use when com uh, when trying to making a distinction between between library, software development kit, and framework is check whether the software package uh, set uh, give you a certain rules or convention that you need to follow. If the software package require you to follow certain rules or convention, usually it is a framework because you need to follow the existing guidelines. So you need to use certain components already provided by the framework in order to make your application run. But for case of library and software development kit, sometimes they can also qualify as framework, but for most of the time, they can be a standalone. They can just be reused 
without following any other existing rules or convention. And yeah, there are, let me go back to the slide. Um, in the slide, it mentioned several other platform and also frameworks. So for developing game, for example, it mentioned Unity, Android Engine, and Godot. So yeah, let me give you one example. <laughs> this is uh, the editor from Godot Engine. So you can um, use the editor here to design your game world and also to program the interaction between objects in your game. Uh, maybe I can open a project about uh, in this example. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if I use a game development for the example because usually uh, I teach game development in every uh, odd semester, but uh, sadly this semester uh, game development is not over. So yeah. Uh, I asked to teach um, the platform-based programming course. So let me give you one example uh, of using a platform and game engine in developing the game. Um, where is it? Is it still there? Uh, yeah, it's still there, cool. Um, ah, it's still loadable. Okay. Ah, it's still loading. Ah, good. Uh, let's see. Ah. So yeah. Uh, this is how uh, game development engine use is used. So the developer can define the look alike of their game work in the editor given by the engine. For example, by using the engine, uh, we can design the building that will be displayed on uh, in the screen. So let's say I want to make the floor to become grass. So yeah, that's one way to do that. <laughs> and also, um, since game engine also provides other functionalities that can be reused, reused by programmers, um, let's say, um, yeah, this character can also be animated using the game engine as well. So the animation frames, well, it's, it's not loaded. Okay, yeah, it's been a while. So maybe the current version of the game engine failed to load the assets. So yeah, I think I need to update this later, but yeah, the, the assets used in the game engine can be viewed directly in the game engine and the developers can also make some modification to that uh, assets in and make it interactable with other objects in the game. So that one example. <laughs> other examples like in Django or Flutter, uh, for obvious reason, you will, for example, yeah, use text editors to for example, create your application and then use the provided tools to uh, build your application so that it can be run on, on your own computer on, on a server later on. And yeah, but there's also a larger scale platform out there. <laughs> so yeah, there is one called Digital Industrial Platform. So yeah, it's more like creative creating an ecosystem for other application to run on top of that platform. So we have, um, 
big corporate like Google, Microsoft, and also cloud service provider like Amazon and Azure. So they provide you with uh, existing solutions. They already built the solutions in a way that they can be reused by the developers. For example, uh, let me show you one. If you are using a cloud service provider that's like such as Google Cloud, yeah, you can use many uh, many features provided by Google. So, for example, uh, if you remember the conference timetable application that I just described in the beginning of the lecture. Um, the back end, uh, the functions that will provide data to the mobile application is hosted on Google Cloud. So via Google Cloud, it can contain several functions. So instead of developing of a complete web application, um, in my mobile application that I developed before along with my team, um, we use functions. So instead of deploying a complete web application that has user interface and so on, we just simply deploy functions to the cloud. So in this example, there is a function that will get publications, the list of uh, papers that will be presented during the conference. Uh, right now, it doesn't have any data because yeah, it's yeah the last time I deployed the function was in 2019. But uh, during production, during the actual, I'm sorry, <clears throat> during the actual conference, uh, the functions can be monitored via Google Cloud. So from this dashboard, uh, I can see how many times the functions were in folk from the mobile application. And then, yeah, well, oh, okay. The source code is can, can be inspected as well. Yeah, source code is a JavaScript code. And actually it's, not uh, the function itself is served as the middleman, or maybe you can view it like a proxy between the mobile app and the actual data source. The actual data source uh, was taken from Google Sheets. So the data source uh, was from Google Sheets, and then this function will communicate with Google Sheets via a previous function here, the SRC Sheets. Yeah. So it used it it used Google Sheets API or a web service. So the Google Sheets provide a web service that can be contacted from other uh, application. In this case, in this example, it was contacted from the function that was deployed on Google Cloud. So the function called the Google Sheets to obtain the list of publications or papers that will be presented in the conference and then send it and then return the results as uh, in a data format such as JSON, JavaScript object. And that JavaScript object is sent to the mobile application. The mobile application will receive that JSON object, parse it, and then uh, display the information as user interface elements in the mobile applications. 
So that one example of uh, Google Cloud. Uh, there is also other platform like uh, blockchain, but yeah, uh, we do not discuss blockchain here. And uh, me personally is tend to be a more skeptical, have a more skeptical position in term in regards to blockchain. So yeah, we won't discuss that in this course. Although there is some hype about Web3 uh, distributed or decentralized apps, uh, those things, uh, I, I already forgot those uh, crypto lingo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we won't discuss about that in this course. So uh, maybe in your own words, look from looking and listening to the explanation of platforms until now what do you think about industrial platform do you have any other do you have any opinions about that about industrial platform yes no or are you tend to be more um i don't know um yeah yeah uh yeah any opinion so far about platform not yet or uh, yeah maybe you are already itchy to code some Django and web application <laughs> yeah uh, some examples here in the chat from smartphones right um uh, use it every day. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, um, let me give some commentaries about this, okay? Um, yeah, so we have so many platforms out there. We have hardware platforms that we use to build and run our software. So we have microcontrollers, uh, or we have server that runs Windows or Linux, in where, which in turn will run an application. Our application here is developed using a software development kit or framework and or libraries so that we can realize the desired functionality that designed by ourselves or required by our client. But then, um, if we actually want to um, make our application to be accessible and used by many other people out there, we often have to rely on service providers since we are a course about web application let's take an example uh, when after we develop the web application then in order to make that web application accessible to our users later on we have to make it run on a server and there are several options access if we want to make our application run on server first we can set up our own server so we 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 buy a PC, then we uh, connect the PC to our uh, internet connection provided by the internet service provider, and then uh, register a domain name and map it to our IP address that runs that connected to our PC that runs the web application. We can do that. Another option is we use another platform provided by other organization or uh, corporate. For example, Google Cloud. So after we develop our application, uh, we can, let's say, instead of setting up our own server, we can set up our own server as virtual machine on Google. So we can set up a new virtual machine or server on Google. Let's say 
uh, we create an application with server or my Google app. And then we put it somewhere like maybe in Jakarta, in that Jakarta's data center. And then we did, we set up the specification of that server. Let's say uh, in the beginning, uh, same with the, we are still developing the application. Let's just uh, use the smallest uh, specification for the server. But later, after our application got popular, uh, maybe we have to increase the capacity of the server. So later on, maybe before the uh, Christmas begin, uh, we stop our application for a while and then we increase the capacity of our server to, let's say, to have 32 of CPU and 32 of 32 gigabytes of memory in order to handle the massive amounts of transaction predicted that will that predicted to happen during Christmas period. And then after the Christmas period ends, we can scale, scale back the server back to the previous capacity, like uh, since the traffic gotten more smaller after Christmas, we can set it to like just have the server just set to have eight CPU with 32 gigabytes of memory. So yeah, uh, it's just a platform, we use platform to build and run and also to deploy our application. And yeah, in this course, we will learn some programming framework, software packages, such as Django and Flutter. And the motivation is first, those libraries, frameworks, uh, development kit, already provided with some existing solutions that we can reuse. So instead of having to develop from scratch, we can reuse the existing functionality. So in so consequently, we as developer can build our application faster. Not faster in terms of performance, but faster in terms of uh, time of delivery from idea to a concrete product. So if we have to develop everything from zero or from scratch, then maybe we need six months to realize our application from idea into a runnable application. But if we use framework, we can reuse the existing functions, modules, and also packages provided by the framework. So uh, the time of development can be further reduced from the original six months to three months or even maybe two months of development time because the developers can reuse the existing functionalities. But yeah, uh, even though we can reuse, but still there, it will involve some additional time to learn about the framework. Because a framework still, uh, uh, a framework usually designed in a way that the programmer needs to follow the existing rules or convention dictated by the framework. You will see later on in Django, uh, one of such convention is if we want to um, uh, create, uh, not create, but um, to develop a function that returns a web page, then we should put that function in a Python source code file called fuse.py. That's the convention in Django framework that you will learn more in subsequent weeks. 
Sometimes we can customize the framework, but for most of the time, uh, the framework is already being strict. We cannot do, we cannot customize certain behavior regarding the framework. I I do not know whether it is customizable in Django to, uh, but for example, to change the location of file that contain your uh function that we will return web pages but yeah maybe it's possible but yeah uh, i need to uh, check it up later but usually um it if even if it is customizable it will incur additional effort to the developers so instead of adding extra cost to the development process the developer just yeah follow the existing guidelines or follow the existing rules so um yeah uh, the developer can focus more implementing the actual functionality instead of um getting confused with on how to bend the framework to their will and yeah why we need to know about platform, especially the platforms that will be used for web and mobile development. Uh, first, um, especially in Indonesia here, uh, the number of people that use mobile devices are much larger than the number of people that actually have computing devices such as personal computer or laptops. The people that uh, let me think of the correct word. Um, yeah, the people that you see on the on, on the streets that uh, work as uh, motorcycle taxi drivers, or uh, and the ones that uh, ask for your money in quotes whenever you park when visiting a, a minimarket or a convenience store, most likely they do not have computing device, but they will have, or most likely will have a smartphone. That's the reality here. So if we, let's say, if, if you want to create a startup, uh, the biggest market here in Indonesia is those who have smartphones instead of personal computer. Because uh, most likely everyone from every economic uh, background will have a smartphone here in Indonesia. But computing device such as laptop or personal computer uh, maybe only middle or the high economic class that will have those kind of devices. So the number of potential customers are further uh, limited. If you try to develop a, an application that target computing devices, but if you plan to build an application to run on smartphone, the number of potential users are much larger here, especially in Indonesia. <clears throat> um, yeah. So next question. Um, <laughs> so previously, uh, I already mentioned several frameworks such as Django and also Flutter. And later on in this course, yeah, you will use them in order to build a web application. So, do you know any other framework besides Django? Maybe you have you previously googled framework before, and yeah, can you share the search results to the class? <laughs> Nobody. 
Yeah, specifically, we will use Django in this course and also JavaScript. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, there exists other web development frameworks out there, not only Django. In Python itself, uh, there is also another framework called Flask. So let me get the Flask. Flask. It's not there. GitHub Flask. Uh, right. Oh, it's in different. So in Git, in Python, there's also exists another web app development framework called Flask. And um, if compared to Django, Flask is more uh, flexible, if I have to say. In Django, you have to follow some number of rules and convention dictated by Django, but in Flask, you can be more flexible. And at the end of the development, yeah, both framework can be used for developing web application. So yeah, Flask will provide you with reusable functionalities in order to build a web application. But uh, compared to Django, Flask doesn't dictate many conventions to follow by the developer. So yeah, you can be more flexible when using Flask. Django, in other hand, have certain convention that needs to be followed. And since we are using the framework, and for most of the time, we do not have um, specific reasons to modify how the framework works. So we just follow the rules dictated by Django. Similarly, when we develop the when 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 we will develop the uh, web pages, we will use JavaScript and jQuery library that runs on JavaScript. And yeah, uh, if we, I think I don't think we have enough time to cover all of this. So yeah, let's say we have an example of web application. Um, maybe, uh, I think I know one example. So um, yep. Okay, so this is one example. Um, later on, uh, your tutorial and weekly assignments will be published on a website. And this is one example. Well, this is not the official website that you will access. This is uh, actually the copy of website that I use for experimenting with the source code of the website that will serve your tutorial and with assignment descriptions. Um, this website is located at this URL, chess, csui, chge, 602, dev. You can actually also uh, open it from your web browser. And for every time there is an access to that web to that website, here uh, I can monitor who access who attempted to access the website. So from the log messages produced by the web server, I can see that there is somebody whose computer's IP address is 145407123 attempted to access the website. And that person, or to be more exact, the web browser that runs on that computer who is located at that IP address 
attempted to get the file located in this uh, in this path in the server so those uh, files in this web in this website is stored on the web server and when you are accessing a website using your web browser your web browser actually making requests to those files in the set uh, located in the server so the web browser has to get this js file this icon file and so on and it and since those files are available on the server those files will be sent to the ip address here so the icon file the javascript file will be delivered via network to this ip address and once uh, okay uh, once the file is transmitted to the web browser let's try it again once the file is already trans transmitted and received by the web browser the web browser then can process the files and uh, implement some interaction or some functionalities of the website in the web browser so for example this link uh not not this link uh let me see um the navigation bar here uh, yeah this one this navigation bar here is defined in an html source code file and yeah if we look in the logs is there any html file no so the logs are rolling so the previous logs are already missing so yeah but uh there will there must be an attempt from the web browser to fetch the html file that contains the source code of this navigation bar and this navigation bar contain several uh, elements actually for example the icon the logo the logo is located in this path uh, slash img slash logo dot png uh, the web browser uh, will once they have received this html page the web browser will attempt to request for that file from the server so if we look in the access log there will be a log message that describe the uh, the request from web browser to obtain the logo file and since the logo file exists in the server the server will get that logo file and then transmit it back to the web browser and once the web browser receives the file the web browser will uh, display the logo according to the layout defined in the html page so the html page says said that this logo is put in the navigation bar and then uh, furthermore it is located in this div container so yeah uh, the web browser will handle the rendering the displaying of the logo in the web displayed web page in the browser so let's go back to the uh, slide where's the slide again uh, So yeah, the web browser will send some requests to the internet and received by the server and the server uh, 
we also try to route the request to the correct uh, pages. Yeah, this is the front page. So yeah, let me open up the example again. Um, yeah. This is the front page, but then uh, we can access the other pages like in there is a guide page or important notes. The path here is docs slash important note. Uh, the web server will know, oh, uh, there is a request that attempted to get the pages located at the important notes URL. So the web server letter will return the corresponding HTML pages that is mapped to that particular URL. That's what happened in the web browser. Uh, but the similar idea happened as well if we uh, use, um, I'm sorry, um, if we use mobile application or web service. So in the mobile application, uh, the web application can send a request to a particular URL and then the server We'll call the corresponding functions in the program written in Python and Django framework. And then the data, the output, will be sent back to the client. That is written as mobile application or another web service, or maybe even as web pages that is rendered in a browser. And now, uh, since we are already running out of time, <laughs> um, yeah, we will learn further in this course. And the reason is, um, one of the reason is, uh, we want to be, we want to cover more variation of mobile platforms. So previously, if we want to develop application to an of to Android or iOS, we have to maintain two separate code bases. So we will have a source code files for Android and iOS for the same application. But by using Flutter, we can maintain one single source code file. I mean, uh, we can maintain a single code base that contains source code files that can be used to develop an application that target both Android and iOS. Although in reality, sometimes, based on my experience, there will be some exceptions about that. For example, like the navigation, how navigation works in Android and iOS, uh, usually it's already being handled quite well by the Flutter framework. But in my experience before, in a different framework, uh, which is React Native, uh, the developer still need to implement some platform-specific code in order to make the navigation works as intended in iOS platform. So maybe later on you will encounter similar cases as well. And yeah, how it works. Uh, this is the architecture diagram of Flutter. Uh, we will discuss about this later after the midterm exam. Okay, since we already running out of time. <laughs> But yeah, when after we have developed a mobile application using Flutter, the mobile application can yeah, communicate with the web application that we already developed in Django later on. So yeah, I think that's all for today. The first lecture about um, platform-based programming. Any questions before uh, I end the class session? or any comments regarding the class session. Maybe I have to um, change the format of the class session or anything else. Okay, so far so good. Or um, excuse me, I'd yeah? like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Regarding, um, are there uh, group projects, sir? Mm, yeah, um, it's mentioned in the course profile. 
there will be a group project later on. D for the midterm exam period and D for the final exam period. So uh, starting from today, uh, I hope you all can try looking for some groups uh, that will be so that uh, when the group project is announced, you already have uh, a group of teams that you already know. <laughs> so yeah, there will be some group projects later on. Okay, thank you. Um, about it, sir. Um, how are the groups are formed? How? Yeah. Uh, the details will be published later. So yeah. Uh, this stay tuned, Dylan. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah. Um, one more question. I'm um, mm -hmm. regarding still about the group project. Um, mm -hmm. how many people are supposed to be in the group? Um, well, I haven't discussed uh this with the other lecturers actually. So, yeah, that's why uh I haven't published any exact guideline about the group project, uh, Dylan. So yeah, please wait. <laughs> uh, so I will discuss this with the rest of the lecturers in the regular program. All right, sir. Thank you. We are very excited for it. Okay. Um, okay. There's also another uh, question in the in the direct message. Could you review the concepts of server-based and client-based application in the next lecture? Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I could try to review them. So yeah, um, let me put it in my to-do list. <laughs> okay, thank you uh, for the input. Any other questions? Okay. So if there are no further questions, uh, let me extend my welcome to you all to this course. So I hope we will have uh, a good time with this course in a semester. And I hope you will uh, learn something new and will be able to apply the knowledge uh, that you learn in this course in your future career and, or professions because web applications uh, are still the hot, the web application and mobile application are still the hot thing <laughs> the, and many employers still looking for mobile developers and web application developers so uh, the common anecdote that we found here in the faculty is yes. after students took this course, they are able to have an internships to uh, many company. Like in Indonesia, we have unicorns like uh, Gojek, Tokopedia, and actually uh, some students that already passed this course can apply and accept that for internship on those companies. So yeah, uh, let's say this is, if you plan to become more professional in software development field, yeah, you can try to the best as you can in this course so that you can apply for internships in your desired company later on after you pass this course. So yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you everyone for attending this first uh, online class session. Uh, we will see each other again in the Thursday lab session in the, at the university. So uh, in the coming Thursday, please bring your own laptop and um, you will work on the first tutorial and individual assignments in the lab session this coming Thursday. So thank you everyone. And I will be seeing you in Thursday. So bye bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm ending the Zoom session, right?